Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Brown uh, from Turf Republic, previous superintendent. I've been in the industry about 20 years, and uh, it's great that we were invited to talk to you today in this fashion, kind of giving a tech talk uh, with technology. So this is pretty cool. We usually travel somewhere, uh, but this is great. So Christian, thanks for having us. I want to introduce, before we get on, we've got uh, a quick 45 minutes with you, and we've got some great uh, information to pass on to you. Uh, but before I start, I would like to introduce the two gentlemen that are with me, uh, and they'll say something here in a minute. But Jason Van Buskirk, Class A Superintendent at Stowe Acres Country Club in Massachusetts. Jason is also a principal uh, with iTurf Apps, which is part of the Turf Republic site network. And also Bob Porter, who is at Hiawatha Golf Course in Minnesota. He is also a principal with iTurf Apps. And I guess just to summarize the three of us, we're, we're three real tech geeks that work in the turf industry, which is awesome. Uh, we, we love everything about tech, um, and uh, the fact that we're passionate about both is a huge bonus. Uh, you know, they, they kind of say, if you if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in our li in your life, and that's kind of true for, for the three of us. So, um, Jason, why don't you go first, if you just want to welcome everybody and say hello. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, this is a great opportunity and kind of a neat, neat experience. Um, they always say that you can... Uh, Present if you can present what you love, then um, it's a it's a hobby and it's it's not nerve wracking at all. So um, it takes even less nerve wracking uh, talking behind a computer um, and sitting here in my office at the golf course in, in Massachusetts. Uh, I know you're down in Mississippi, but uh, we had some snow flurries this morning, so it's actually nice being indoors uh, with the heat on and and not worrying about the outdoors right now. So thanks. All right. Bob? Uh, hey, welcome, guys. Uh, Bob Porter. Um, I'm probably a lot colder than any of you. It's about 12 degrees here right now in Minnesota. We don't have any snow on the ground, but uh, the golf courses around here are getting ready to close, so that's kind of when this kind of this stuff starts cranking up for us, and uh, looking forward to all the shows this winter. All right. Well, guys, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share my screen with you. And so on your screen, you should see uh, a, a keynote presentation now. So what we're going to talk about this morning um, are app efficiencies, mobile apps to create efficiencies and build your brand. Um, you can see we have some contact information there. Feel free to reach out to us. We'd be glad to help you in any way. Uh, we're going to talk uh, really about two apps specifically, and I'm going to brush on mobile technology. But we felt uh, to give you the you know the biggest bang for your buck, we really wanted to concentrate on two apps specifically, and Bob and Jason are going to do that. And we've got a neat way to share their iPad screens for you so that they can uh, they can show you how to use these apps. So everybody, welcome. And uh, as we get going here, I want to kind of stress uh, how uh, mobile devices are really impacting us. So typically, what I do is I do this exercise in all my talks where I have everybody stand up and they kind of pick an area of the room here. So the question I'll ask you, uh, and no need to stand up because I'm not going to be able to see where you are anyway, uh, how many mobile apps are there in total? And you've got iOS, Android, Windows, and BlackBerry. And, you know, honestly, who knows what BlackBerry's doing at this point. You know, first they were going to sell their company. And now they've just hired a new CEO for $88 million. So who knows where they're going. But... So if you were to take all those apps and add them up, how many apps would there be, total mobile apps? So without having you get up, I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is 2.3 million apps that are out there. Uh, just to give you a little breakdown, uh, iOS, which is the Apple ecosystem, just broke the 1 million app mark uh, earlier this summer. Uh, Android, I'm, I'm sure, has broken the million mark. Uh, Windows has about 175, 180,000 apps, and BlackBerry has between 75 and 80,000 apps. So there's about 2.3 million apps that are out there. So you can see that that you know if there's an app out there, if there's something you're trying to do, chances are there's an app out there that you can uh, that you can use to accomplish what you're looking to do. Another exercise here: the penetration of mobile devices in the U.S. Okay, so that's mobile devices, uh, iOS, whether it's an iPhone, iPad, uh, Android devices, Windows devices, and Blackberry. So if I were to ask you what percentage of the U.S. population has a mobile device, 
uh, is it 30, 55, 74, 45, or 60? The answer is 55%. 55% of the people in the United States have a mobile device. And I can tell you where that is going. They are anticipating by January of this coming year, as in, four, as in six weeks from now, this percentage is going to go up over 60%. With the holidays, there will be more mobile devices being give, given as gifts. They're anticipating anywhere between 60 and 64% uh, mobile penetration in the U.S. To give you an idea where that stands with other countries, we'll just talk Canada specifically. Canada is at a whopping 74% right now. 74% 74, 74 of that population has a mobile device. Now, I'll talk mobile subscriptions. I don't have a slide for that right now. But mobile subscriptions, if you take that as a population, as a world population as a whole, okay, so the entire population of the world, we are at a 98% mobile subscription penetration. They are anticipating by March that they'll be, there will be more mobile subscriptions than there are people on this planet, which is scary. Okay, so give you an idea of what a mobile subscription is. So if you were to see me, I don't want to turn off screen share, but I've got an iPhone and I've got two iPads. They each have a, its own data plan, so that's considered a mobile subscription, just in case you were wondering how we come up with that percentage. Um, so I account for at least three. Um, I know Jason and Bob have several as well. So pretty scary that there's going to be, I think it's 98 billion, I think, or is it 68 billion world population? There will be more mobile subscriptions than there are people on this planet. So what does all this mean? What does all this mean? Well, I'm showing you a picture of a pair of pants now. This means that if you are looking to find an answer to a question, the chances are the answer is in your pants, on your mobile device. And that is pretty scary. I'll put this in perspective for you again. I'm sure many of you have gone out to buy a car in the last year or two years. Okay. With mobile technology out there nowadays, answers find people. People don't find answers. So we'll go back to the, uh, the car, buying a car. Chances are the person going in to buy a car knows more about the car they are buying than the person selling it to them. That is pretty scary. We'll relate that to golf course terms here. Okay. A lot of us now are using Twitter, we're blogging more, we're on Facebook, so we're all great ambath ambassadors of the turf industry. Well, that also means a lot of that information is searchable and it's on the internet now. So, you know, we used to refer to them as, you know, Monday morning quarterbacks, uh, you know, as they would, they would uh, I guess, tell us how we were maintaining our golf courses, but with the amount of information out there now, when members or guests of your golf course come to you about what is out on the golf course, um, chances are it's a pretty legitimate concern or a legitimate answer they're coming to you with. So we need to make sure we're staying out in front of it, and that's why we like to give these, these really cool technology talks so you can get mobile devices in your hand, uh, use the apps that are out there, and use technology to your advantage to stay ahead of all this. So I'm going to get into kind of lead into um, Bob and Jason's talks. And Bob and Jason are going to talk about Evernote and Google Docs, or excuse me, Google Drive, because they are two of the most powerful apps. And given some time constraints of about 45 minutes today, we really wanted to give you uh, a lot of bang for your buck here. Uh, instead of going over five, six, seven apps really quickly and really not giving you any take-home points, we really wanted to hit home two apps specifically to really uh, give you give you something to take home. So, what is the cloud? Well, think of the cloud as your filing cabinet in your office. I'm sure most of you have one of these, if not all of you have one of these. And the cloud is just something where you can store information somewhere. And if you were to take all the information that you store in the cloud, because some of you probably don't even realize you're using the cloud. Um, I'm sure this is a very familiar sight for many of us. Okay, I know this is sometimes how my golf cart looked like when I would come down from the clubhouse, or possibly this is what my golf course golf cart would look like coming down from the clubhouse. Well, we don't want to do that anymore. We want to utilize the cloud. So let me give you some ways the cloud that you may be utilizing the cloud that you don't even know about it yet. Okay, 
So we'll give you this little graphic on the screen. The cloud is just not, don't think of the cloud as just Dropbox or Google Drive. The cloud can be your music. For example, Apple has their iTunes Match. Um, their iTunes Match um, uh, music subscription where you can have up to 25,000 songs in the cloud. And Apple stores your music in the cloud for you. And when you want to listen to a specific song on your iPhone or your iPad or even on your computer, you simply tap the song. The song is either streamed from your device, from the cloud to your device, or you can say, you know what, I'm going to listen to, to more, you know, maybe on an airplane, or I'm going to listen to it more often that I want it on my device. You're going to click the little cloud button, and it's going to instantly download to your device. Now, Apple has some really cool algorithms built in where your device will know that you're not listening to Christmas music anymore. It's now March, so it's going to upload your Christmas music, Christmas music back up to the cloud again, which is pretty cool, freeing up space on your device. If any of you use Twitter, and if you use it on multiple devices, or Facebook on multiple devices, that is, that is another example of cloud. It's not a file, it's not music, but it's cloud storage where if you utilize Twitter on, say, your iPhone, and then you utilize Twitter on an iPad or your desktop, you can simply pick up where you left off, thanks to cloud storage. Uh, if you look at apps like Yelp, Yelp is one big cloud of information on restaurants, on uh, places to visit, on amusement parks, or what have you, and it stores all that information on the cloud. So just think about all the information that I've just brought up music, Yelp, social media, and if you had to carry that around with you physically all day, you know, again, you'd sort of look like this or you'd look like that. So the cloud is a great, a great tool for us to use to really create efficiencies for us and to help us move information around. So the other benefit of the cloud is that it's not platform specific. Okay, so if I use something in the cloud and I want to share it with my members, maybe it's a, a meeting agenda, and I put it on the cloud, whether it's Google Drive or Dropbox, they can access it from any device. And you can see from this photo, they can access it from a Windows computer, a Mac computer, a Droid device, an Apple device, a Windows device. And, and BlackBerry dabbles in cloud a little bit with some of these, but not, not like the other three uh, big companies. So it's nice because it's not device specific. And Jason's going to talk on that with Google Drive about how he shares things with uh, some of his members and how they're able to access it regardless of what their device is on. So let's talk about um, blogging. Now I hope if I was standing in front of you and I asked how many of you have a blog, I hope the majority of you are raising your hand because blogs are just, it's just a fantastic way to push information out to your members or, or, or guests of your golf course. So how can we bring the cloud into blogging? Well, we've got a, 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 um, a blog post here that we would like to post on the daily ground about a bunker update we're doing. So when we hit send or publish on that post, where does that go? Well, that goes up into the cloud. And you know, when I give my social media and blog talks, a lot of people tell me, Bill, I don't have time to do all this. I don't have time to blog and then post it on Facebook and then Twitter and then email it and then maybe give it to the clubhouse for them to put on their website. Well, you're right, and I don't have time to do all that either. So utilize the cloud, and with your blog, you can attach certain widgets or gadgets to your blog that will utilize the cloud. So when you hit publish or send, your post is up in the cloud, and now you can automatically push it out to the people at, uh, at your golf course, whether it's, it's members or guests. So I'm going to circle my mouse here. You can have them push it out via email. So if members subscribe to your blog via email, the minute you hit send or publish, they're going to get an email saying, Bill has updated his blog, and they're going to have it right on their email. You can have it go out to a, as a push notification on their iPhone or a push notification on their iPad. You can have it automatically send out on Twitter. You can have it automatically post to your club's Facebook page or maybe your Facebook page. Or you know, RSS feeds are kind of used for websites to pull information in and syndicate and aggregate. But if, if your club has a website, you could simply set up an RSS feed so when you hit send or publish, your blog post is on their site. So that's just a great way to utilize the cloud to, to maximize your distribution of information as quickly as you can. And it goes back to the original picture of 
you know, the when somebody's looking for the answer to a question, it's probably in their pants pocket. Well, we've got to make sure we're putting it in their pants pocket. So we're going to use the cloud and some of these great apps Jason and Bob are going to show you to do that. So I'm just going to finish up real quick with a couple uh, significant cloud platforms here. You've got up to, uh, I'll start on the right here, Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox uh, is a fantastic platform to, to utilize cloud storage. You can even do pictures, videos, what have you. I uh, I utilize some workout videos when I travel and I put them on Dropbox and uh, I hit the fitness room in the hotel um, and I can bring my iPad down and do my workout. Um, this this bottom middle one here is uh, Apple's iCloud platform which is awesome um, and if we have some time I can touch on that. The left one is Google Drive which Jason is going to touch on for you and the top one is Office, 36, Office 365 or their SkyDrive account, which is if you're Windows based, I would suggest you uh, looking at that because it integrates with the Windows platform very nicely. So just give you an idea too, a lot of this doesn't cost you any money at all. Now there are subscriptions here. Um, we have 100 gigs from Dropbox for $825, you can get 200 gigs for $16 or 500 gigs for $41. But just to give you some perspective here, with my Turf Republic platform, we have a ton of media, okay? Ton of photos, ton of posts. I am not using more than two gigs. And with Dropbox, you get two gigs for free. I'm not paying for any Dropbox storage at the moment, okay? Um, with Evernote, Bob is going to talk about Evernote does cloud a little bit differently where they, they charge you per data transfer, okay? So you can store as much as you want on Evernote, but if you want to transfer that data back and forth, say between your, your MacBook, or your iPad, or your iPhone, or a Windows computer, or an Android device, they charge you for that data transfer. I can tell you, with the free version, with as much as we use Evernote, we do not uh, go above that data transfer rate. I do pay for a premium version, just to get some of the premium uh, the, the extras that the premium version offers, and Bob can touch on that. So, with that being said, I'm going to turn my screen sharing off and hand the presentation over to Jason, who is going to touch on Google Drive. So, Jason, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, Bill. Give me a second here to pull up the screen share. So, uh, I'm going to talk about Google Drive and... Um, for the quick 10, 15 minutes that I, I am going to run through this, uh, it's a, I guess a, a precursor to uh, this this year's national conference. Um, I'm I'm actually teaching a four-hour seminar on on how tos in in Google Drive. So sort of a, a selfish plug there. Um, look for it in the seminar uh, manual. Um, Google Drive is really uh, has changed my operation uh, in the last well three years since I've been using it. Uh, it is essentially Microsoft Office on steroids. Uh, it allows you to really captivate uh, everything in your operation, um, Word documents, spreadsheets, presentations, uh, and even forms in a database uh, format. And it's extremely self-explanatory to use. So, in order to get going with Google Drive, you, um, if you have a Gmail account, then you already have Google Drive available. Uh, you just need to simply um, go into it. So, um, once you're there, you just need to set it up. It's, uh, it's a pretty simple operation. Um, and if you don't have a Gmail address, then, then you can simply create one uh, without a Gmail account. Uh, so what I had talked about was Google Drive, uh, and this is the main screen of the Google Drive. Uh, once you're in Google Drive, uh, you're gonna you're gonna come over here to create. And when you hit create, it's gonna bring up a, a selection of of documents, uh, spreadsheet, presentation, drawings, uh, or Google Form. When you create these documents, they're going to automatically be, be stored or saved to your drive, uh, more along the lines of what Bill was talking about with your cloud. 
Um, it's Google's cloud, and in Google's cloud, they allow you so much storage space. Uh, with that storage space, uh, you're allowed 15 gigs for free. Uh, more importantly, you can access this data from anywhere. There's an internet connection. Um, I know this is a, a talk on app efficiency. Google Drive has made it very simple for iOS user or really any tablet user, any smartphone user, to download their Google Drive app and access all of your files right there, mobile friendly. Um, and from there, you can collaborate on the document with yourself because you created that document on another computer. Uh, or more importantly, maybe you're working on a budget spreadsheet or a project spreadsheet with, with your assistants or your mechanic uh, or some other stakeholder uh, member of your company. And, and from there, you're allowed to uh, be able to collaborate. Everything gets saved immediately and saved to the cloud, and you can go back to it whenever you want to. So when you're, uh, when you're on the tablet, however, um, you can make changes in, in the offline mode. So I know some of you might not have that, that 3G or 4G capability on your tablet, um, Wi-Fi only. Um, you can make these changes on the tablet in the offline mode, and when connections are stored, you can, the changes are automatically synced to your Google Drive. Um, you can make edit, the edits that are made online are seen immediately, and uh, they're, they're really convenient for meetings to have all your important documents right there on your tablet. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've gone up to a meeting, I bring my iPad with me every time I go to a meeting, all of my documents are right there on Google Drive, and I can pull up and answer any questions that are, that are available. Uh, we talked about um, creating all types of documents. So your presentations um, are made with Google, uh, or more importantly, you could upload a PowerPoint presentation to Google Drive and make your changes right there as well. Uh, now, I understand that you might be more familiar with PowerPoint, but the power of it is that it's saved right there in your Google Drive. So if if you're going to give a presentation that somewhere where you might not have uh, the availability to have your, your laptop or your device with you, you can bring that presentation up on your Google Drive account by just using your username and password on someone else's computer. So um, to, to browse through pretty quickly here, um, I'm going to talk about sh the power of sharing the document. So um, here you just see a, a snapshot of a spreadsheet that I have for equipment quantity and value. Um, and I've created this document, and now I want to share it. So up here on the top right, you see a big blue button that says share. Um, if you click the share button, you can invite your peers to work on it, uh, owners or, or club members, committee members to view it, uh, and everyone can collaborate on it. Um, so maybe if other, other people in your company have more information than you do, uh, they can enter that information in real time, and every piece of data or or information is is viewed in real time. It's it's always saved uh, within seconds of the edit being made. Um, once you're once you're here, the sharing settings, um, you can change the viewpoints. So uh, as you can see here, uh, I'm the owner of the document, so it says that I'm the owner. Uh, this ha happens to be the owner of my course. Uh, he can only view the document, and then this happens to be my mechanic, so he can actually edit the document. So, again, the power of, of sharing the document, everybody is always on the same page at the same time uh, without, with very little um, meeting or talking being done. Uh, you can actually go to the meeting and solve something and not have to restate everything that, that, uh, that you need to talk about anyway. Um, to breeze through all four major documents that Google Drive offers or uh, Google presentations, very similar setup to a PowerPoint or a keynote presentation. Um, Google Spreadsheets, again, very similar to uh, Microsoft Excel and in that they allow for formulas, equations to be added, uh, sheet referencing to be done. Uh, really, really, everything that is just about doable in Excel is is also doable in a, in a Google spreadsheet. Um, and truthfully, the reason that 
I would prefer to use Google Spreadsheets is because I can access that data from the field on my iPad, at home from my iPad, uh, or from a laptop, or again, anywhere that I can log into my Google account, uh, it is available. The data there is available to me. Um, the really neat thing about all these documents is that they can be published to the web. So, for instance, uh, I don't have a screenshot of it, but um, my blog is stoacresturf.com. So if you go to stoacresturf.com uh, and you click in the top right job board, it's password protected. I've made it available to publish my job board, which is in Google Spreadsheets. I publish my job board to my blog so that uh, staff members or uh, clubhouse personnel or members or even the owner can log into my blog, type in the password, and see the updated job board for the day. Morning jobs and afternoon jobs, they can see exactly what's getting done. More importantly, the staff members can see exactly what they need to do. I also have that job board shared on my downstairs computer in the shop so that I can make updates and changes from my tablet or my phone uh, in that the job board can be accessible and changed um, from the sixth hole. So Google Docs, very similar to Word. Uh, I prefer Google Docs over Microsoft Word because, well, let's just say you're, you're typing up a presentation or, or a paper, a document you're presenting, and you needed to research something real quickly. Well, Google allows for that, that search uh, right there inside your document. You can see over here, I apologize for the, if it's small to view, but um, over here on the right side of the document, Google search is still provided. And, and you can type in whatever you're looking up. Uh, more importantly, you can add your citation right there as, as well. So there's no, uh, no faltering with that. Um, probably the most popular and, and best transition um, that I've seen for efficiencies here in the shop or, or in my operation is Google Forms. Um, you can literally collect any type of of data or any piece of data that you you wish to. Um, it's simple. You're back on your Google Drive page. You hit create the big red button on the left. Create a Google form. This is what's going to pop up. And and from here you are given a list of questions that uh, you would like to ask. So uh, right here where it says uh, question title, you type in name for the employee and question type. Uh, you can select from a whole list of text, paragraph text, multiple choice, check boxes, choose from a list, um, so on and so forth. And, and you really, in order to get good with forms, it's just uh, practice. You just practice with it, practice with it, practice with it, and you'll see the, the efficiencies that it has for it. But the, the best part about it is that any entry that's made goes into a back-end spreadsheet that you can manipulate. So here is a screenshot of my labor hour tracking. Uh, and and you can see that the employee comes into the shop, they go to the computer, they enter their name, they enter their job, and they enter the, the amount of time it took to do that job. And from there, I can manipulate the data to add up the totals for all of what's going on for the, for the day, the week, the month, or even the year. You can create pivot tables, so you can do comparison viewpoints from the, the, the employee, the job, total hours for, for everything, um, irrigation repair, um, manipulated all of the data to, to read easy for, for anyone that, that wants to view it. Um, so that that's just a real fast version of Google Drive again. Um, some websites of interest that I, I find really really helpful for me um, more importantly. And um, again, if you're interested in Google Drive at all, uh, it's changed my operation around a lot. I know it's changed Bills and, and Bob's out uh, pretty substantially, and I know a lot of guys are on Twitter uh, asking about it constantly. Um, I am presenting in February um, a four-hour seminar on how to do all of these things, and um, I know that uh, it would be pretty valuable to, to take a look. So uh, thanks for the opportunity to present uh, Google Drive. All right, Jason, thank you. Great information. Uh, we're going to switch gears a little bit and hand it over to Bob. Bob's going to talk about an app called Evernote. Um, Evernote kind of 
kind of dating ourselves here is like the 19 late 1980s version of a trapper keeper with the balloon on it. But uh, there's a reason the elephant is the logo because Evernote really lets you remember everything. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to Bob here. Bob, you're on. All right. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. <clears throat> And right now you should see uh, one of my folders on my iPad that has Evernote in it with the green elephant there in the upper left. Um, like Bill said, Evernote is essentially their tagline is remember everything. Uh, it lets you remember everything from web pages to content within web pages. You can save pictures, PDFs, uh, JPEGs, uh, all kinds of picture formats, text, uh, virtually anything you want that you can drag and drop or save via other apps into your Evernote account. Um, just quickly on the on the screen there, you see a couple of other apps. These are all apps that I use that are connected through Evernote. Uh, Skitch in the upper right is one that they own. It's actually a, an annotation type application. You can annotate PDFs, uh, pictures, uh, draw things on pictures. Uh, it's useful like out on the course, like say you're taking a picture of an area where you want to cut down some trees. You could literally just draw some X's on the screen, save that picture, send it to members, send it to a Greens, Greens committee, um, or what have you, and, and kind of illustrate that way what you're going to cut down. At the same time, you can also save that to your Evernote account and have that you know, for future reference. Uh, Scanner Pro there also links to Evernote, uh, Penultimate, uh, the Scan Plus, all these applications plus other applications that I don't even have on the screen right now. Um, have the ability to log back into Evernote and save from other websites, from other, like Google Chrome, for instance, uh, Dropbox, all these services go right back to Evernote. So I'm going to open Evernote here, and this is what it first looks like on an iPad. On the left side of the screen is uh, some of the different departments within what I have. Notes, they're kind of in the middle. Is There's 1,223 notes currently in my all my notebooks. Notebooks is what Evernote calls kind of a folder if you want to call it that. They're just terminology as notebooks. Uh, this is showing a premium account. Um, I have a premium account. There you can see what I've logged. You know, Currently I've only done 11 megabytes of one gigabyte for this month. So like Bill said earlier, um, the premium is not required, uh, not even by a long shot actually. Um, I do use it, so I guess I would consider myself a power user of it. The premium allows for faster searching within your documents or your notes. Um, also, for quicker OCR, which is the optical recognition of all the text on the on the PDFs or images, and some of their tech support and stuff. If you have issues, they they tend to put you to higher in the queue. If you're if you're not a uh, unless you're a free user, then you're kind of, I guess, lower on the list, so to speak. But um, I'll show some of my notebooks here. I save everything for the golf person here. Um, I have, like I said, 1,200 notes. There you can see a list of a lot of the golf courses. You see golf course in bold letters up there. Um, I have everything from fungicide products to uh, equipment to expenses to projections to uh, fertilizer companies, GIS-related stuff. I mean, there's just so much stuff in here. One of the things I probably use on a day-to-day -day basis is for, is for holding my invoices. I'll open up the invoice uh, notebook here. This is just a bunch of PDFs that I've pulled in, different invoices I scan, either from a, a flatbed scanner, like an all-in-one type, an HP model, let's say, um, or a, a Lexmark, or any of them has have some of those flatbed scanners. You can scan your page, either email it to yourself, uh, you can get it on a, on a computer from an SD card, from a USB drive, uh, literally anything. And the great, probably one of the better things about Evernote is that it's not device dependent. You can use it on a Windows, a Chromebook, a PC, um, an Android device, Win, uh, and or excuse me, BlackBerry, iOS, Windows, uh, mobile phone, and they all just sync together. You could have literally five different devices, and your information is the same on all of those devices. So this just shows, you know, here's for one, for instance, for landscaping. Then it just it holds your document there. You can open it, download it. Um, I'll just open it here. You can see what it looks like. It's just a simple invoice for 
and I did some text writing on there to show my PO numbers and all that for, for our finance department. But um, one of the other things I wanted to show is I have irrigation maps in here. So if I open those and I open like hole number 18, let's say, that's a PDF right now. I can open it up, and what I've done is essentially gone into my my mapping. Or I think I actually had the the Rainbird uh, distributor make this for me. I had them scan my my uh, CAD drawing and give give me as tight of on each hole as they could. So this is number 18. You can see a little bit of 17 there, and you can zoom in on this and zoom out on it. I select the screen now using Sketch because they own that. In the kind of in the upper right here, there's an arrow with an A and a little symbol below it. I'm going to tap that. And now it blows it up a little bit. Now you have the tools down on the right side of the screen there. So if I select the pencil, I can draw on here. I don't necessarily want pink, so I can go in and change the color. I can change the thickness of the line. And then I can undo what I just drew. Or if I want to say I have an issue with you know, the head right here on 17, I can circle it. Now, if I have this shared, and I can also do text. I'll get back to sharing in a minute here. So I can just tap on here, and I can type in, you know, bad head. And then save that. <clears throat> so if I have this shared, let's say I'm sharing with Bill and Jason. Um, if I go back to my, I'll just save that. If I go back to my folder list here, or notebook list, for instance, at the top here for the tech center, I participated in the tech center last year at GIS. That has a little, shows Bill's name below there. That means that I'm sharing that with him. So if I go into one of those notebooks and change something, he's notified that, hey, Bob changed something, or vice versa. And all of these notebooks can be shared. So whether you have, in my case, I'm a, I don't have an assistant or a mechanic, so I don't necessarily share with anyone, but someone like Jason, could share all these notebooks or, or any single one with his mechanic, his assistant, his owner, and a lot like Google Drive and all the cloud services, then you can see that information changing as you edit it back and forth. Um, one of the other powerful things of, of uh, Evernote is, let's say I have all my notes pulled up here, and I go up into the search in the upper right there, and let's say I just type in Toro. It searches everything in my notes all, all 1,200 of them with anything that has Toro in it. So whether I search for Florentine or Griggs Brothers or, you know, any terminology you want to use, it will literally pull everything that you have there. That's probably one of the really great features. You can dump so much information in here and forget what's in there. You don't really have to remember what you put in there. You just have to do a search term and type it in, and away you go. Um... Some of the other things are, I don't know if I have any pictures I could pull up really quick, but I could literally just take my iPad right now, take a picture of this screen if I wanted to as I'm presenting, and just save that right into Evernote. And it's as quick as that. You tell it you want to save it. You can do it from right within the app. If you go, I'll go back here to, let's just create a new note. So there's a blank note. I can go up here to the inbox. And now I can tell it where I want to designate that to. I'll just say I'll put it in 2013 there. And on the bottom there, you have all the toolbar. So I can start adding text and do whatever I want, you know, whatever I want to add. Whoops, then I closed it. And just save away. Or I can tell them I want to take a picture, go up here to the paper clip, go to my camera roll, or go to a document, or... You know, now here it's looking at my desk, but I can turn it around, take a picture of myself if I wanted to. So Evernote really just gives you so many options, so many ways to save information. You really don't have to remember anything <laughs> if you don't want to. You can just know that it's in there. I mean, I have everything from, you know, copies of medical cards to owner's manuals for equipment, service manuals for equipment. Um, one of the other things, and I'm also um, going to be showing some more in-depth stuff at GIS, um, one of the other cool things you can do with Evernote is you can link a notebook or a specific note to a QR code. So I've been testing some things where if you put a QR code, let's say, on a roll bar on a piece of equipment, 
I can walk up to it with my mobile device, scan that QR code. It's going to know that, hey, I need to open up Evernote and go right to wherever I link that to. So if I linked it to a Toro 5210 Fairway More, then it's going to pull up the service manual or the owner's manual, whatever I linked that QR code to, and I'll have that information right away without having to go fumble through a paper book and, you know, have to worry about that or get the book all dirty or what have you. But um, So that's just a kind of a really quick run through. I'm sure I've kind of plowed through stuff fast, but I just wanted to kind of show the powerful use of Evernote, and it's something that I use literally every day. Very good. I'll, I'll, uh, one, one way we used Evernote uh, kind of taking off from Bob's QR codes is my uh, Toro irrigation technician was a huge um, Evernote user. So what we would do is I would put in satellite inform all the satellite information, including a map, station numbers, where the electric ran back to, uh, station numbers, what whatever it was about that satellite. And uh, I would load it into an Evernote note, and then I would simply excuse me, take a generated QR code, and when you lifted the satellite lid up, there would be a QR code. So the irrigation tech would just take his phone um, and scan it, and he would have all the information uh, about the satellite. And again, utilizing the cloud, um, if we made changes, I don't have to go out and print you know, a bunch of documents out. I don't have to go out and change the QR code. All I did was change it in one location, and that was in Evernote, and it's changed the next time anybody ever um, accesses that note. So there's some very, very powerful devices or, excuse me, apps that are out there. Um, before I, I let Jason and Bob close, I just wanted to screen share one other thing with you, some tools that we've created at iTurf Apps to help you out. Um, so we launched back in um, August the first turf, uh, turf industry app market. So it's essentially like the uh, Google Play it's like uh, the App Store and the BlackBerry Market. Uh, we've created um, an app app store just for the turf industry for individuals to go and learn about all the apps that are available for turf managers. And we talked about there being 2.3 million apps out there. Well, what we've done is we've said, here are apps that we think are good for the turf industry. Some of these are very turf, turf specific. Like you can see, they have the University of Georgia Turfgrass Weeds app or the Turfgrass Management app. Uh, here's uh, some apps that are out in the UK, a Turf Selector and a Turf Calculator. But um, what we've done too is we've taken, so say like an app like Evernote, if you were to go to that um, specific app on the App Store or on Google Play or the BlackBerry uh, market, you would get the developer's uh, description of that app. And that might not pertain to anything in the turf industry. But what we've done is we've given you app descriptions based on turf usage and how you would use it in the turf industry. And we categorize everything very nicely. It's on iTurf apps. We've got business apps, cloud apps, education apps, even navigation apps, photo and video, productivity, social media, sports apps, uh, travel apps, and, and of course weather apps. If you were to click on a specific app, and here's one called Keynote, this is what I use to do my presentations, we break things down very easily for you. So we give a rating here. So we think, as an iTurf apps team, we think Keynote is a four and a half out of five. Well, users can go in here and give us their own ratings. Obviously, somebody here didn't think the app was very good, but there's three, three total ratings here. We give you some positives, what we think are some negatives. You have what category it's in, what platforms it'll work on, and then if it's a paid subscription or a free subscription, or excuse me, a paid app versus a free app. We kind of give you a bottom line, basically two or three sentences on this is why we think the app is good for you. And then we give it a very robust review here. Again, based on, you know, I've been in the industry 20 years. Bob is pretty, you know, Bob is over 20 years. Jason's around how long I've been in it. So you've got like 60 or 70 years worth of turf industry knowledge that we are taking uh, that and incorporating into technology and giving you a review on it. The other bonus here is that you can go right from our from our app store and you can go download the app. So if there's something you read and you like it, you go download it right from the app store. So this also becomes a very powerful tool because as more reviews are built into this, this becomes like the CNET or uh, you know other review sites that are out there for other industries where it's not only our view, but it's how you use the apps. So 
this has been a, a, a great uh, a great tool for the turf industry. And then the other area, because I know we were very quick today, um, I just need to flip my screen share here for you. The other area I wanted to show you uh, was our uh, iTurf apps Tech 911. And again, we we were pretty quick today, but we set this up. Uh, Basically, you can send us anything you you have a question about in the turf industry, or excuse me, tech industry as it pertains to turf, or maybe it doesn't pertain to turf. But you know, we've had everything from you know, I just bought a new iPhone, how do I set it up, to uh, some irrigation questions on on uh, like an MI controller or the link system, and we're able to answer them for you. Um, you simply go to the site, you fill out a form here, and then we provide uh, a breakdown of all the questions we've been asked. And so you can simply search. Maybe somebody's already asked that question, and we've got the answer for you. So, you know, we we created the three of us created iTurf apps to be a resource for the turf industry for for everybody, so that we could we could share our knowledge with you, um, so that you guys have a resource to go to. So, um, with that, I know we're kind of running up on time here. Jason, I'll let you go first if you want to close close things out. Yeah, I mean. Uh... Bill did a great job in summarizing everything, uh, all points in app, app, app efficiency. Uh, and I mainly spoke about Google Drive. Uh, Bob did a great job on Evernote. Um, my my strength is Google Drive. I use I use it every day, every day in every walk of my life, mainly in the shop and the golf course, but but every day on my phone, my iPad, and and on the desktop. If you uh, if you have any questions at all, um, feel free to go to Tech 911 on iTurf apps and ask any questions um, that that become available, and we'll do our best to uh, obviously answer you uh, as quickly as possible. And Bob, I just wanted to say thank you for having us, and uh, hope the rest of your uh, conference goes well. And um, you can find me uh, at Hiawatha Turf on Twitter. Um, or you can send me an email through the link that Bill showed earlier in the in the session. But um, just want to say thank you again, and uh, have a great day. All right, Christian. With that, thank you very much. This was this was awesome, especially presenting this way, uh, really embracing the technology. So with that, uh, you know, we could take any questions if there are. We'll try to answer them the best we can. None are coming up, but uh, but Bill, Jason, and Bob, that was that was really fantastic. And um, to the audience, you know, that doesn't just happen. There's a lot of uh, work in the background, and so these guys have been really, really patient with this and have done a really good job. That went pretty smoothly. Um, so again, thanks to you guys, and let's give them a big round of applause. All right, great. Th thanks, guys. All right, appreciate it. Thanks, Christian. We'll see you.